Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from XVRAutomation.com and this is part 25 of our Coded UI video series. And in this part, we're going to talk about waiting for a control in Coded UI testing. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 24 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. So wait for a control. So waiting is one of the most important operation in any automation since we must or may need to wait for a control to fully appear in screen before performing further operations. Thread.sleep can be used as opposed to wait, but it's always a bad practice to use it in code. If I watched my videos in Selenium or BDD and Specflow, I have always told that Thread.sleep will always put your execution in a very bad shape since even if the control appears you are forcibly saying your code to wait for a certain time whichever you have specified so you need to somehow write some mechanism to wait for a control to appear or to enable or to exist and then once it appears you should not wait any further and then move forward in selenium there are two concepts called implicit wait and explicit wait if you are familiar with Selenium, then these two concepts will be very easy for you to understand. If you don't, then just go ahead to Exit Automation channel and there is a Selenium Tidbits playlist where you can see there is an explicit and implicit weight video. And you can watch the video on the explicit weight and implicit weight and understand how Selenium waits for a control to appear on the screen. Similarly, in Coded UI testing, there are different types of wait statement which are actually shipped along with Visual Studio code UI testing like wait for control conditions wait for control enabled wait for control exist wait for control not exist wait for control property equals wait for control property not equals wait for control ready so these are some of the wait methods which are shipped along with Visual Studio code UI testing so you don't have to you know, reinvent a wheel by writing a lot of codes to understand or perform a wait operation. Those things are completely not required in Visual Studio. So let's flip to Visual Studio and see how things work. So, so far what we have did is we have waited for the control using the system.threading.thread.sleep. So once we click the login button, we'll wait for the next page to appear and then we type the initial KK in it. So if you're not familiar with this particular code, I would again request you to watch part 24 or 23 so that you can understand what these concepts are really talking about. Right, so this is, this is the same code which we have been talking from part five, I believe, of this video series. Right, great. So instead of this thread.sleep, so how are we going to replace this code? So for that, I'm going to write a very, very simple method. Let's say public void wait for control and then I'm going to write a code little generic as we did right here so as we did for the click operation or for the enter text operation the same stuff so we have passed these kinds of parameters there so I'm gonna again grab these codes right into this place all right okay we don't require this Come out there. Great. And then, see, I'm not going to write any code right now. I'm just going to copy paste everything. That's it. And then I'm going to paste it right here. So wait for the control. It's a very very generic term, right? It is. You're not specifying that you're going to wait for the HTML input button, or a HTML edit text, or a HTML drop down, nothing. You're not specifying any uh, control explicitly here. So it's all generic type. So if we write the code like this, then every time we need to check for the code here like this, like if control type is HTML input button, then perform this operation. Similarly, if the control type is HTML edit, then perform this operation, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's a kind of lot of codes. So instead of writing this huge code, why don't we do this? We have already written a generic code for our enter text. Remember, if you recollect from your previous parts, you'll be remembering that we've already written this generic code 
So whichever control you place it right here in the generic type, the type will automatically get transformed here. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy this code, rather that code, and paste it right here. So I'm going to just paste this code right here. See, right now it is very, very generic. So you can, whatever control you're going to wait, you can wait here. But see, instead of typing, we're not going to type here. We're just going to wait for the control. Right. So let's say. I'm going to type a very meaningful name here. Wait for the control. And now explore each and every wait for control methods just shipped with Visual Studio Code Audio by testing by Microsoft and see how things work. So we know what is the control right now. So this is the control which we're going to wait for. And uh, let's type the generic control dot wait. Okay, see there are a lot of uh, control uh, methods available like wait for country control conditions so we talk about this method a little later so before that I would like to use this method wait for control enabled so if this control is enabled then perform the operation so by default the time is 60 seconds uh, if not uh, you can explicitly specify the timeout right here so there is an overloaded method you can see what is the timeout period that you're going to specify it's completely in milliseconds right so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just leave this as it is. So 60 seconds, that should be fine. So wait for the control enabled, right? Uh, great. So now, instead of this threading dot sleep, I'm going to replace this to our generic wait for control method. And for that, I'm going to just double slash, I mean comment it. And I'm going to call this guy. And I'm going to wait for the HTML edit. Right, this guy, this button, this HTML text, right? And we know what is the property type. So the property type is name, and the property value is initial. And one more mistake I've did is uh, we don't require this text because we're going to type anything right there. I'm just gonna wait for the control. That's it. All right, sounds great. See, this is the super simple code which we have written, and that should wait for your control. Right. So generic control right now. So our control is specify. This method will act as a waiter for the particular control to appear or control to get enabled. Right. Great. So let's quickly run this code and see how things work. So I'm going to just hit run selector test. All right, it hit the login and type the initial KK there, which is great. But let's do a negative operation, which means we need to make this test to wait really because it's pretty fast right now. And since it is very fast, we couldn't see whether the wait statement is really working or not. So what I'm going to do is, when the test starts, I'm going to turn the net uh, internet of my machine off, and I'm going to see how things works. So again, I'm going to run the selector test, and then I'm going to switch to airplane mode. So this will disconnect the internet connectivity from my machine. All right. All right. It typed the name, and you can see that the page is not appearing because there is no internet connectivity, but still it's waiting. It's still not throwing any error there, right? Let me connect the internet again. So I'm turning the airplane mode off. And now you can see it's typing the initial KK there. I'm just great. See, and now we can understand that the code wait for control enabled is really working because it waited till the page appeared or till the control is enabled, right? So once the control is enabled, it performed the intended operation by typing the value KK there, which is great. So this is what is the expected stuff for wait for control. Similarly, you can start using a lot of available methods like wait for control exists, wait for control property equals, wait for control ready, etc. But right now, I'm going to write one more complex method, which is nothing but wait for control conditions. 
This is very, very useful because here you will specify a condition to happen. And only if that condition evaluates to true, then the operation gets successful. So here we'll use predicate delegate available with Visual Studio. So I'm going to use wait for the conditions, right? And you can see that it expects me a predicate there, right? So what is the predicate and what is the condition evaluator? Right? And also, you can pass the predicate here. So what I'm going to do is, let me quickly type the lambda expression for this predicate. So you can write the lambda expression as well while writing the predicate. So I'm going to use a lambda expression here. So let's say x of generic control dot wait for property equals so I'm going to say that okay if this property which I'm going to pass is equals to this particular value then exit out of the loop don't wait for the control anymore which means you found the control that's what I'm saying here so I'm going to combine two methods which is available like wait for control conditions and wait for control property equals and then I'm going to wait for the control to completely appear or not. So this is a kind of conditional statement you're saying to the code UI test explicitly that if this condition is met, then say that, okay, my control is found. So I'm going to write wait for control property equals of, it asks for the property name. So we know what is the property name. It's nothing but type, right? So it's type dot to string, comma, property values, nothing but the value which we passed from the parameter, which is great. All right, that's it. So if you write this kind of code, you're saying that if this control condition is met, if the property is equal to the value which you have passed, then you found the control which is great. So let's try to run this and see how things works. So let me let me go to the text explorer and hit the run selected test. And again, I'm going to turn the internet connectivity of my machine off. All right, I've turned the airplane mode there. So right now it should not connect with my All right, I type the username and password and you can see that the page has not fully loaded because there is no internet connectivity so let me again connect the internet let me refresh this page and it should type the initial for me did you see that it's working all right great so this is how you can wait for a control in code UI testing using wait for control conditions or wait for control enabled or wait for control exists, etc. So these are the different kinds of waiting statements available with Visual Studio. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.